Hi, it's Mayo. I'm back. Here's my hands. We're going to do the mousse today. So remember what I taught you about composition? You take your composition, you start with a dominant rectangle. In this case, it's going to be sideways. The dominant rectangle is actually the mousse. And then you divide it into smaller rectangles, whether you borrow it from a reference photo, a mountain, or perhaps a cloud, and you build on that golden mean. And that golden mean, you will find that it's most successful for all compositions. And it has a scientific basis. So the wise artist always avoids equalized distribution of shapes. So what you want to do here, and it is the Greeks... The Greeks called it the golden mean, so it's just a ratio of how you divide your composition up, and it's important. And then you can use um, triangles, and you can use directional points to f to make the whole composition flow nice and evenly, and to invite the viewer into it by guiding them through the flow and where the final focal point is. In this case, it's the moose, probably the face, the moose's head, and the antlers. So we're going to start with watercolor today and my favorite bamboo brush. It's right here. And we're going to use a simple palette today. So it's basically Payne's Gray, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, the Red Brown, and probably a little Yellow Ochre. So we're going to start it here. Always test. So have your tester sheet out. You can test your colors and your values right here. That's important. And we're going to go ahead and put some of the mousse in here. Now you're going to leave white because that's why you're doing watercolors. Very important. We're going to put a shape here. And in here. The fun thing about this one is I'm going to teach you a little bit, unlike the others, about using sponges. Sponges are great for animals okay, and fur. I actually like that. It gives it a little bit of texture. We'll put that right there. We'll go into a little burnt umber and a little brown, which would be our burnt sienna. We'll test it here, maybe a little bit more, kind of like that. So burnt sienna is a red-brown, you can see it here. We're going to add a little bit more to our palette. We're going to dip our brush in the water, and remember always to have a lot of clean water. So we're just going to put a little of this in, mix it with the Payne's Gray. I think I forgot to mention Payne's Gray. So we have Payne's Gray here. And then we're going to bring it down for our mousse. This is where his hip is, so we're going to bring a little bit in there. As long as, remember, you keep your bead wet, which is your water bead, you can always manipulate the whole thing. Move the water, dark, shadows, wherever you want. A tiny bit maybe of yellow ochre here. I like a little bit of that in his lower part of his legs. And in here. And in here, and then we're going to come in here, put a little bit in, we'll mix a little of that test. Right here is your tester, I'm sure you can see it. This is where you always have a piece of paper, watercolor paper out, and you test your values. And some will be dark, or and some will be lighter. So that's why you always want to have your test sheet out. Here we're going to put it in like this. And then maybe here, I like that color, and then in here. And drop your index finger and your thumb so you can get great control of this bamboo brush and its tip. And it is basically a combination of a technique. Sumi painting, and the Japanese use this. And a combination of sumi painting and western techniques for watercolor. There's his little nostril here. 
I'm going to put in his eye. Just use the tip here. If you see, nice and slow. That's why the bamboo brush is great because of the way you can manipulate it and where you can use the tip or the fat part. And usually I start the background and I tell my students to start the background. But today we're going to do the mousse, fill the mousse in before the background today. So remember when you paint, it's just not always written in stone. Some techniques can be different. And as long as I keep it a little wet, I can take my little sponge here and just make some texture. Yeah, like that. And it just picks up the watercolor that's on there because it's still kind of wet. And it just adds enough texture and leaves enough white. Okay. Even up in here, you can move it. So this is actually 100, and I talk about the weight of your watercolor paper, and I always say that Arches is good, but sometimes I find out that this 140-pound uh, this weight, I don't know, it just seems to be more forgiving. And that's surprising considering how expensive Arches, and Arches is 140 pound, and that's how you measure the watercolor paper. But I happen to like this 140 pound very effective. So we're using 140 as far as the weight of the watercolor paper we're using. And I'm just wiggling this. I love to leave these white parts. That's why I love watercolors. So we're going back in with a little bit more Payne's Gray here. And I'm going to put it in here. You move around though because we want all this wonderful composition all this wonderful feeling in here. So that's why you want to move around. And I like the sponge, natural sponge. We can pick up a little more. So this is our mousse in the winter cedars. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a little bit of red brown and burnt umber. Burnt umber is a great color because it is actually a uh, kind of a green brown so I like that we'll go back in always have your test sheet out for your values I'm going a little darker with this Payne's gray right in here and down in here to his leg now you can always run another pass so remember that you you can always darken the thing is you can't really lighten so go lighter a lighter value and you can always let it dry and come in for a darker value like in here around his eye i'm just gonna get this tip nice and straight here we're gonna go around his eye here up in here down in here and around in here and then a little darker because he's turning his head as you can see we're just going to make it a little darker in here and back in there. See how you can run these passes? Put a little technique in because of the hair. So, and then I'm going to come in here for a lighter value and bring in, I love this color. This is the combination of the burnt umber. I'm going to leave some white in here, keep that a little wet. Leave it here a little bit, and I can pick some up with the sponge, so watch. There you go. Pick it up a little bit. Some technique, some fur. And then we're going to come in here. And I'm going to run a pass here and around and here. And then... Sometimes one pass is just what you need. And then in here. Yeah, I do use my fingers sometimes, but this is the best part right there. I'm going to go in with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. I'm going to show you here. And we're just going to run that pass here. I like that color right in here. I'll leave a little bit up there on his head. 
and we'll just take it like this. We'll run that up here, and we'll run a little darkness in here. Back in here, we're going to put this in here. Sponge it out. Big fella, huh? I like that technique. And then in here. Go there. Go here. And then down. Over to here. Here. And then there's a little tail here. have a, t a little tip to their tail like a rabbit I noticed it's interesting we're gonna go into the burnt sienna now and we're gonna put in his antlers and down in here we're gonna run the tip here and then we're going to run it up in here. I'm going to use that part and I'm going to leave a little white in here like that. I'm going to run it up in there. There you go. A little excess water off. right in here for the liver point. Okay. And then darker in this part. lighter here with this pass. Up in here. I'll leave some of that technique. I'm gonna go back in. I'll let that dry for a second before I go back in. Let's let that sit. That's why I always want you to work around. So let's go into the uh, cedars. So we're going to test our value. I'd say that's like a mid, mid, maybe a three, or maybe a two. Light would be one, two would be this, three would be the medium value, four is getting a little darker with your Payne's gray, like this, and then five would be super dark. But we're going to use this right now, and we're going to go in here and put our cedars around him. Similar to his color, too, if you look. But I'm going to make it like this. So I'm going to use the side of the brush. Now you're going to see me use the side of the brush for the cedars. Different technique. And then we're going to put it in here. Here. Around his antlers. There's one here. Go around his antlers. And then in here. So you can see the cedars leaning. Leave those white spaces in here and leave it in here. I'm going to bring him down a little. Our light source is coming from the left so you can see that. Go back in for some of this. You can just leave it on your test sheet. And we're going to put this one in. Using the side of the brush now. And I want it darker in this side. See, I'm using the side of the brush. We're going to leave that little white spot. And that's our cedar. They're kind of shaggy, like a, a shag, shag bark hickory. That's what cedars are like. So we're going to leave it in here too. So our light source is here. And we got these spots in here. Then we're going to come over here and do this cedar. Bring it down. Your brush. Go back in for a darker value. Split it. That dark part. 
and like that. And then we're going to put in the branches. So we're going to go a little darker because I like the negative space in here. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to cross this. And these are great shapes for the cedar in here. Branches coming here and here. And a little bit of green. So this is just an extra color in our palette we're going to add today. Just so we can add a little green with a little yellow ochre in here where some of the tree branches are. Some, some of the pine needles, excuse me, in here. And in between, just some green. I like that white in there. Go back in, little Payne's Gray, back into the Payne's Gray. Let's do some of our branches in here, coming off the cedar. Probably a value of three here. One here, one here. Let's take it out a little bit. I'm going to go back into here. Let's clean that brush. I didn't want any green. I want straight Payne's gray for the branches of the cedar. Up. And we have one going this way. I like the crossing. We can even put a lighter cedar in here. Okay. And then we'll just crisscross some of the branches here. That's our cedars in the background. That's a shaded one back here. I like these branches that crisscross. We'll do a couple in here. Crisscross. Fading in here, maybe one faded back in there. But we got some cedars in. Come in here. Remember, it's dark on the right. Light source is coming from the other side, which is coming from the left. And we'll put some cedars in here. A little bit more Payne's gray here. Leave some of those white spots. That's why you're doing watercolor, because you want to leave those white spots. Come in here. Right here. Here. We'll put this around here, around our, our moose. And in here. Let's go back to this part. I'm going to use the tip like that. See, I'm dropping my index finger down. And I'm going like this. And then we're going to go into here and put a branch here. We got a cedar in here around. Yeah, that's sweet. And then some here. We're going to bring a cedar in here. Shh, kind of like a shag bark cedar. One in here. Keep it light because the light source is coming from there. And then we're going to go into here. See? That's my crazy cat. There we go. And then we're going to put a little bit more here around the moose. I like this part here. And then we'll just bring some branches in and in here. Crisscross because Remember, I love negative space, and this is where you'll see all this negative space uh, is the white in the middle. There we go. You can even go off the page, but I'll probably leave it like that. Okay. We're going to use our little sponge here, probably just up in here to show some of the texture on the pine I mean, cedar needles, a little bit, pick it up in here, cedar needles, I like that color, go in here, there we go, go back, run another pass in the antler, Remember, burnt sienna. So we're going to run it in here. We gave it a chance to dry. 
always work around. I teach you that when you do a composition, when you do a painting, anything, you work around. We're going to make it a little darker in here. See, I can run another pass and give it that 3D look. A little shade in here and back into here. Dry your brush and just shade it out here. And here, we'll shade that out. All right, now we're going to make his eye. I'm just going to go in for a little detail right here. The pupil. I'm using the tip of the brush. The very tip of the bamboo brush. Roll it so you can get a nice tip. Roll that tip so all the little hairs are in one spot at the very tip of the brush. You can put his little pupil in. Like that and outline it a little bit slow remember the hand will always follow the eye so look ahead look at where you're going not where you're at we're gonna put in his nostril here strange shape it's a great shape it curves a little bit like that too then I think we're gonna come in here And in here. This is where we're going to frame it out a little bit because of the muscles. The hair is hiding it, but we still have to follow it. Grain. But the hair always seems to go the same way. Remember that. Just like a grain in steak you cut, hair, animal hair always flows. Usually one way. So pay attention to that if you want to give some of that detail the most. And in here, use the tip. This is where we have that round part in here. We're going to separate here a little bit, that back leg, and we're going to bring this leg in a little bit where the snow it stops. We get a little shadowed in here. And then we're going to come in here and shadow it in here a little. Dark in here. Now, if you have it that dark, don't panic. You can just move that water bead like that. And a lot of nice contrast. And down in here, we'll pick it up here. We'll put it in here. We'll go around here, and that's his bottom part. So, I mean, it's nice contrast now, and he's nice and dark, but if he's too dark, you just take your little sponge I was showing you about and pull it out. Gives it a lot of nice texture in there at the same time. Leave some of that white area, and let's go back in with a little bit of burnt sienna here. We'll go back in here for this leg part and down in here for that. There's a little tail. Up in here and a little one here. Yep. Here. Here. This should be dry enough to run a tiny bit of Payne's Gray in here for a little detail where it's, it's separating here, see? And then it's coming down. That's his head. And here. The antlers right in here. I'm going to leave that part. I'm just going to take this. I told you about paper towel. You just pat it, just hold it down, lift it straight up. Might have gotten rid of a little bit more detail than I wanted. But let's dry up that tip. Now we're going to use less water. Yay! And just a dry brush for in here. 
tiny little right in here. Now I'm going to bring it in here. little outline but not much I really don't want to outline and I don't want you to outline but you can it's called line variation so we can do a little here and bring it like that so it's here and let's get that tip Roll it nice. Get that tip sharp by rolling it. Get all the little hairs together. Dry it up a little bit. I don't want much detail, but I'm going to go in here for the top. here let that dry but we need this darker here burnt umber I'm going to put a little burnt umber in here again here and then there in here she's going to bring it like this bit like that down in here so remember the palette we're using Payne's gray burnt burnt sienna a red brown burnt umber a green brown A little bit of yellow walker. I think my favorite color is Payne's Gray. And that's what I'm putting in right now. A little bit more of the Payne's Gray here. For some detail and some darkness. Right in here. And in here. I come up in here and I'm just going to do a little bit of line variation but not much because it's dry enough here that I can so I'm just going to do a little bit by his antlers and under here and then a tiny bit just that tip of that little brush here very lightly In here just outline his nose a little bit here and use a paper towel sometimes like I show you there you go I like that technique now we're gonna finish clean water have a couple cups of clean water we're gonna put a little bit tiny bit we're going to add a tiny bit of red a cadmium red to the yellow ochre and just put in this little bit of light back in here a little bit of sunlight coming through between the cedars just run it past so with a little bit cadmium red and a little bit of yellow ochre in here and then we're going to run a little bit in here between the cedars. That is too much. Right in here. Here. A little bit more. A little glow. Beautiful sun in the background. A little bit like that. Now, our water beads are still pretty... Everything is pretty wet and workable still. So let's put a little bit, go to back to the eye, and let's put a little bit of 
our burnt sienna, our red-brown in there. Just in his eye, they have a little bit more red-brown around the pupil, the mousse. So I got that point pretty sharp again, and I'm going to come in here and just put in that beautiful red-brown. That came out pretty good. Tiny little detail. I could run another pass in here. It's dry enough. A darker shade at the bottom. And I could run another pass in here on this antler. I'm going to dry the brush. And I'm just going to work that bead like that. That water bead and pull it down. Let's see. Let's examine. Take a second and look at what we're doing here. I'm going to move to the clean water. We're going to let this dry. So let's do this. Let's put in the snow. So we're going to use a value when the paint's gray. Very light in the beginning. And if you have pencil marks because of your drawing prehand, I don't always draw ahead of my watercolors. But in this case with the mousse, I did. Um, start when you draw and remember your composition with the large shapes and break them down medium shapes and then in the end you do your detail. So we're going to put this in here, a little snow. And I might even use a little bit of um, gouache. And gouache is the white. I like the white out of the gouache. And that helps with the snow, so I'll show you that. Let's get this in in here. This is the pattern of the snow, so leave some white in there, because he is in the snow, walking in the snow. A little in here, for a cedar, and a little in here. This brush is great for texture, and you have to pound, so you can give some texture to the snow. You can always use what I was showing you before, the little sponge too. Let's get a clean one and a bigger one here. Kind of gives a little grainy feeling for the snow. It's not that smooth and that's what I want. I don't want it too smooth. I'm going to put something in here just around, around these branches because our light source is coming from the left. So I just want to streak in some here on the cedar. And I want to put in this log in here with some branches. So we're just going to use that tip again, put in this nice tree log broken up some detail in the snow up in here. And in here, another branch. Cedars, I love the way they break up. And they have such a curly or kind of, um, their branches are very interesting because they're all different shapes and wiggles they make and meet negative space. Cedar, we're going to leave it like this. could run a little yellow ochre in here. We we'll see the panes gray and the yellow ochre. It kind of creates an interesting color in the cedars other than just plain panes gray. Little yellow ochre in here. Just going to put let that dry a little bit more. Okay. Go up in here. His eye is over here at this junction here. You can see it. And it goes down up on his forehead. I can take this out a little bit, a little bit there. And let's put in the eye here like that. And that's his forehead.
Oh, let's see. Let's go back in with a little burnt sienna, the red brown mixed up with a little of the burnt umber for this part of his leg here. I want to define that a little bit more in here. And the separation here, define that. Then we got some muscles in here we're going to define. And this back legs. Then we'll run a little bit of a yellow ochre in here. There you go. Here, take that out. All right. Now, we're going to take a tiny bit of the white. And this is gouache. We're going to take a little bit of that. And we're going to run it in here. Because I like the color it makes with the snow. Just a little bit of that white gouache. Gouache is not translucent like watercolor. It makes a more of an opaque color. But that's fine. It's great to use. Even in the cedars. Use your brush. Take your um, bamboo brush. Remember to take it. Hold it sideways like this. And you can get some nice textures in there. For the cedar, see? And the gouache gives it kind of a milky look. I like that look. There's the snow. I'm going to add a little bit more in here. Give it that look and then bring it up. You see his feet and back of his legs. A little lower in here. So if you use, you can put your bamboo brush down, and I'm going to show you, this is like very seldom. Do I ever use a different brush other than the bamboo brush? I pretty much teach my students to, to use the bamboo, bamboo brush the whole time. But we're going to take this brush right here, and we're just going to bring in a little bit more texture on the side by the cedar. And it's dry. See how my, I'm using the side of the brush, but it's dry. And here, they're like shag bark hickories. They have a very interesting shaggy bark, the cedars. So this is our winter scene, our moose in the winter cedars. Let's see here, a little bit more detail and we'll be finished for the day. Just in here a little, a little bit more detail here, huge head, so I'm going to bring it here and here just to show that head separation right in here, underneath here, a little bit of contrast, a little bit more contrast in here. Let's see. Clean that brush, get the white winter gouache out, and bring it in here a little. Let's see, right in here. I want that darker in here. Back in here. Here we go. A little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to dry it up a little and run it right in here. <coughs> right in here. A little bit. Maybe too much. I'm pull it up just for a little added color. So. I think we're going to finish this for the day. So here is our moose in the winter cedars. And it is watercolor, simple palette, Payne's gray. Just adding a little color in here, a little bit more contrast in here. Payne's gray, burnt sienna. 
burnt, uh, burnt umber, a little bit of yellow ochre, and then we got our cedars. And the branches crisscrossing, maybe a little bit here, darken it up a little bit in here. I like the way these branches are moving this way. We got this one. It creates interest up in here. And you can use contrast here. So I can use it around his antlers. A little bit of contrast in here. And a little bit in here. So this is our moose. Thank you for watching once again. I um, hope you give me the thumbs up and sponsor me. This is the winter, the moose and the winter cedars, a watercolor with a touch of gouache, which I used white for the snow. And thank you so much for watching. It's Mile.